Starting out as a bold experiment in 2011, Samsung's Galaxy Note devices have grown up and matured over the years, proving that yes, there are quite a few people out there who would love themselves a gigantic screen on their phone. This eventually inspired Samsung's competitors, including rival Apple, to also explore the depths of this so-called phablet space. Riding on the momentum from the S7 and S7 Edge released earlier this year, Samsung is now eager to unleash its newest Note, granting it an early start against Apple's upcoming Plus model. I'm Ray with Phone Arena, and this is our Samsung Galaxy Note 7 review. After it showcased its new glass design language for the first time with the S6, Samsung has continued to refine it, first by introducing gentle curves on the rear glass of the Note 5, and now by making it more symmetrical all around with the Note 7. Viewed from the side, the Note 7 is indeed symmetrical, which is very aesthetically pleasing. However, Samsung's promise for a perfectly balanced design isn't completely fulfilled, as the handset's top bezel is ever so slightly taller than its bottom one. That said, I find the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 to be a very attractive phone overall. Available in four shiny colors, light gray, black, gold and the brand new blue coral, which combines light blue glass panes with soft orange metal frame, there's hardly a variant of it that doesn't look fancy. The Galaxy Note 7 is remarkably narrow and convenient to hold for a 5.7 inch device. But this is not a phone to be used one-handed, for sure. It's definitely on the clunkier side and it almost slipped out of my pocket once while I was driving, so you might want to carry it in a bag or something. In terms of overall quality of execution, the Note 7 inspires confidence. Uh, not only does it feel nice and solid, but it's also water resistant, meaning that you have to worry about one less thing. Numbers wise, all is top notch with the Galaxy Note 7 screen. It's fairly massive at 5.7 inches and the Quad HD resolution is incredibly high. But there are some important issues to consider here. We tested two units of the Note 7. One was the international version with the Exynos chipset and the other was the US version with Snapdragon. The two units show considerably different color characteristics. The US version exhibits almost spot-on color balance. The international unit, however, suffers from undersaturated red, ending up looking cold and greenish. Aside from the color balance inconsistencies, it's also worth noting that um, the gamma for both the US and the international phones is close to 2.0, causing the screen to appear slightly washed out. To summarize, should you get the US model, color balance and overall authenticity, if you use the basic screen mode, will be top notch. The international model, however, leaves something to be desired. On the plus side, the Note 7's massive front and rear glass panels are Gorilla Glass 5, so Samsung hasn't done any corner cutting here. The Note 7 introduces a new security feature called Iris Scanner. This allows you to unlock your phone by, you guessed it, looking at it. However, it's a bit more complex than that. Right now, the Iris Scanner is not really on par with the fingerprint scanner that's built into the home button. It's neither as convenient nor as reliable. For example, you need to hold the note pretty close to your face for it to work. Also, the fact that you have to be looking directly at it um, is an inconvenience in itself. For example, you cannot unlock the phone while it's lying on a table. It also doesn't work if you're wearing sunglasses. And last but not least, it just looks creepy. It's no doubt a useful technology that should be improved further, but right now there's a superior biometric security feature we already have, and it's called a fingerprint scanner. Powered by Android 601, the Note 7 brings a new software user interface where everything is much cleaner than in previous galaxies. It also attempts to standardize icon shapes by putting them in white icon frames which works and looks mostly good, but if you're not into that, you can always disable this feature from the settings. 
touch with continues to be a largely versatile thing uh, with a lot of settings and options to tinker with. It even comes with its own themes app where you can radically change the look of the user interface complete with the app icons. Another really cool new feature is the secure folder where you can store separate instances of entire applications with their own unique content. For example, you can have a separate gallery app within the secure folder and that gallery can house all the memories you happen to be ashamed of. Or you can have a separate contacts app with private entries there. With this new user interface, the stock phone, messages and email applications are all pretty nice and streamlined, while the calendar tends to be a bit laggy um, if you happen to have a good number of appointments. Meanwhile, the edge screen functionality is back for another round. Aside from the fact that it feels really mistitled these days as about 99% of it takes place on the main screen of the phone, the edge screen's whole purpose is to give you quick access to stuff. The thing is, you likely already have this either through shortcuts or through widgets. So really the edge screen doesn't seem to add anything meaningful to the table. Plus, it may actually be a clumsier way to reach what you're looking for, as you need to swipe your way through all of the panes. Unlike the edge screen, the S Pen has actually evolved into a rather useful tool. For things first, I don't like the spring loaded mechanism um, as the whole point of this is to be able to quickly jot down notes as they say, but having to first push it in and then pull it out slows down the whole process. It would have been significantly faster if you could just, you know, take it out and start writing with it as it used to be the case prior to the Note 5. In terms of feature, there's some new stuff here as well. Most notably, there's the new GIF Creator or GIF Creator tool, which is part of Smart Select. It lets you quickly create a GIF animation out of pretty much anything that's shown on screen. It's really easy to use, uh, but the resulting animations are not particularly fluid. The new S Pen can also magnify on-screen stuff for you or translate text by hovering over each word. The problem with this is that you really need to hover over each and every single word, one by one. It translates just one word at a time, making it a surprisingly tedious solution. You should be better off using something like the Google Translate app for this purpose. Another new feature of the S Pen, which is indeed very cool, is the screen off memo, which allows you to just take out the stylus and start immediately start writing on the screen. And then once you're done and you uh, put it in, it automatically saves this as a note within the new notes application. The Note 7 comes in two variations. In the US, it sports the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820. While in most other markets it comes uh, with its in-house produced Exynos 8890. Both of these silicon marvels are extremely powerful. They have more or less equal processing potential. And in this case, this means overall very snappy system performance. While most games and apps tend to run quite well. In some very rare occasions, I noticed some frame rate drops in some games but those instances were mostly few and far between. The Galaxy Note 7 comes with the generous 64 gigs of internal memory. Not only does this allow you to store tons upon tons of content, but you can also expand it with a good old microSD card for even more storage potential. So what is a Galaxy smartphone without a superb camera? That's exactly what you get here with the Note 7, the same 12 megapixel shooter that has already made the Galaxy S7 the wonderful camera phone that it is. The camera application is mostly easy to deal with. Now, most camera modes are accessed with a swipe to the right, while filters with a swipe to the left. The 12 megapixel images the Note 7 takes are gorgeous. They offer mostly correct, if slightly warm color tones. At the same time, um, everything looks nice and vibrant, perhaps overly so. 
Details are abundant, although there is quite a bit of over sharpening going on, which gives the photos a slightly more aggressive look than needed. With the added warmth, saturation and sharpening, it feels like Samsung is pushing things a bit too far with the post-processing. Still, pics from the Note 7 do look great, so I guess there is not much cause for concern. The camera also does an admirable job when shooting in low light and night conditions thanks to the good sensor size and the wide f1.7 aperture. At the same time, the 5 megapixel front camera isn't particularly great. The field of view is so wide, one can hardly take a normal selfie shot without their head appearing stretched like a banana. Video recording with the Note 7 happens in 4K at 30fps or 1080p at 30 or 60fps. And most of the things that we said about photo quality apply here as well. An overall solid picture with some noticeable over sharpening and added vibrance. As far as night video footage goes, it's mostly good, though I think the noise reduction is a bit too aggressive here. The Note 7's massive 5.7 inch screen is perfectly suited for media. The vast amounts of storage space allow you to keep as much content as you'd like on the phone, while the video player application is so versatile it can even play HDR10 video content now. And if you don't know what HDR10 is, don't worry, we didn't know either. Long story short, HDR10 content is still hard to come by. But it's growing, um, some Netflix or Amazon shows already come in this next-gen format, which aims to offer a richer and more dynamic image quality. So the Note 7 is the first smartphone to have the hardware muscle to decode such content thanks to a dedicated chip. And while its display doesn't technically support all of what makes the HDR10 content so great, it does offer the AMOLED Cinema mode which is designed to make the most of the HDR video footage by expanding color gamut a bit. Aside from that, there is a bottom-mounted speaker on the Note 7. Volume-wise, things are pretty decent, while in terms of clarity, there's something to be desired. Uh, it's not too bad, but it could use some brilliance in the highs and depth in the lows. So, how's the battery life with the Galaxy Note 7? Well, there is a 3500 mAh unit here that can be charged either through the reversible USB Type-C port, a first for a Galaxy phone, or wirelessly if you purchase the separate wireless charging accessory. After using the phone for a few days, I can safely say that it can last through a full day of moderate usage. Standby times seem to have gotten a bit better compared to previous Galaxies, the phone loses around 9% of battery over the night. If one day of battery doesn't sound particularly promising, there are a couple of power saving modes you can try here. The mid power saver is interesting because it allows you to simply lower the resolution of the phone to either 1080 or 720 pixels. There's a teeny tiny bit of uh, visual clarity lost. But in return, you'll be getting longer battery life and increased performance. And then there's also the max power saver, which significantly limits functionality on the phone, but enables a simple black theme in order to significantly extend longevity. The Galaxy Note 7 is an almost incomprehensively versatile smartphone. It can do so much right out of the box. Of course, the large screen, the seemingly endless functionality and all of that S Pen goodness are obviously not for everybody. So who is it for? Samsung says the Note 7 is for the overachievers and the multitaskers of the world. For people who want to do more while on the go. And while that's true to a great extent, I don't necessarily fully agree. More often than not, the Note 7's own features stand in the way of efficiency. With so much going on all at the same time, the Note 7's sheer ambition can quickly feel overwhelming. If you tend to thrive in chaos and don't mind tackling several tasks at once, 
this might just be the right smartphone for you. After all, it has most of the essentials right and it's undeniably, unquestionably powerful. But if you instead see yourself as a more of a mainstream consumer, not necessarily a phablet junkie, there's a similar but slightly scaled down experience available and it's called Galaxy S7 Edge, which I think will be a much better fit for most people out there. Thank you guys for watching our Galaxy Note 7 review. If you found it useful, do share it, give us the thumbs up. And of course, if you crave even more Note 7 content, just come visit us at phonearena.com.